So I'm coming home from my usual Monday night bar shift, thinking I'm going to watch the new Jules Holland episode that I managed to get hold of. I'd already seen the shorter live version that had been broadcast earlier in the week. I had lots of big people on it, like Jay-Z, Nora Jones, Sting, the Foo Fighters. And um, I was looking forward to getting home and watching the extended recorded version, seeing more performances from them. invented almost a new style, like Floyd Kramer invented the slip note piano, he has invented his style, which he calls lap tapping. He's on tour in Britain as we speak. This is a song called Air Tap. Please welcome the wonderful Eric Mongrain. I've been playing guitar myself for about 15 years now, but that was the first thing I'd seen in ages that made me feel like I've not even really begun to play guitar yet. So I went online and checked, Jill said he was touring. I was thinking I really want to go, but I really want to film it and maybe get an interview with him. I thought, you know, if I try and contact him, his management are just going to bluff me off. The only way that it's going to happen is if I manage to get in touch with him himself. So I sent him a long email just kind of telling him about myself, the, the course I was doing, how the music I was into and things, and asking if I came down from Dundee to Newcastle, if he would let me have an interview with him and maybe film him and film the gig. Um, you know, just hoped for the best. Basically, I, to be honest, I sent the email, I hadn't heard of you until the Jules performance the other night, and then I was just totally blown away, man. Like. Well, I don't, uh, just don't go that often to, uh, my website's uh, inbox and blah 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 so especially when I'm uh, I'm gone if I'm not at home it, you can always expect uh, more time for actually re respond to people This is Kev, the sound engineer from the venue in Newcastle. I managed to get his number because I wanted to check that I had the right leads to get a feed out of the sound desk for the gig. Um, and Kev made me the cables in the end, which was really good of him. But also, when I first got down, I was speaking to him about how I'd seen Eric on Jules Holland and how he was playing there with Dave Grohl at the Foo Fighters and how Eric was really into Nirvana, apparently, when he was younger. So I wanted to ask him about that. And before I got the chance, Kev did. It was pretty weird to see... Uh Started right there, and after I kind of wanted to, you know, because 
I was coming back from the hockey game, was zapping on TV, and then Nirvana was playing, and I had no clue who they were. I just said, and I started listening, and for some reason it, I don't know, woke up something somewhere in me, and then, ah, music is nice. And <laughs> it just happened that very day. Then everything changed. I mean, I stopped doing sports, I started smoking, started doing drugs. <laughs> Women, you know. It's not a pretty bad trade, in fact, it's a pretty good trade. When uh, my mom threw me out, well, you know, I had to figure out how to live on my own, and playing music in the streets seems, uh, seemed appropriate at the time, so I started doing that, and uh, worked okay for, uh, for a while, but, you know, of course, uh, I had nothing from, from the start, you know, I ate, I ate canned soup for, for 10 years. <laughs> And for a long time. But I said the EQ was right. So basically, AirTap came to me, uh, well, AirTap, the, the chords and the rhythm, which I call AirTap. I was in Spain, in San Sebastian. It was 9 in the morning, I had my coffee. I had a tree, I had a, the sun, I was a free man. I have no clue what I was doing there busking at that time of the day, but there was no one, like what, the only dude in the street with my case open, but it was just, there was a, some sort of air of happiness. And um, this rhythm kind of just, came and I started jamming and just tuck and uh, YouTube kind of helped a few years after. <laughs> One day like that I was playing and uh, some dudes came and they wanted me to play on the, some TV show and I said yeah and then the TV show um, so it was some sort of talent show in Quebec and then some people saw it and then blah 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 and it created a like, chain reaction effect and then YouTube came out and so forth then I met my managers this is Ben, you can say hello Ben um, Ben is my best friend uh, you know, probably more about me than most humans on the planet we travel together basically he's a, also a driver I don't drive, I'm too lazy of a bastard to drive he's a driver, he's a very good driver so also my accountant, my manager, uh, bass player, and uh, it's gotta be. No, I, I'm always sure that I forget something. And before they were not managers at all. We became friends, and then they started being my manager. And we started uh, getting more calls and more calls. We invested some money to make uh, Fates, the first album. Blog and YouTube came into play, and da, 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 and then you start meeting people, and then you, you know that guy that knows this guy that knows this guy, and then this guy calls, and then blah blah blah. So, this is all like in the last five years or so. So, you know, the wheel start turning at some point, but it's a slow wheel, it's not very quick. Looking back on it now, it is pretty crazy. I mean, I hadn't heard about Eric at all until the Monday, and then on the Thursday, I'm down in Newcastle interviewing and filming it. And he was such a big fan of Dave Grohl and Nirvana when he was younger, and um, you know, when it now when it comes to him playing on Jules Holland, he can't even get a chance to speak to the guy. And although Kev had already shadily managed to ask him about it, I still felt I wanted to hear it for myself. Yeah, but you never got to meet Dave Grohl, no? Nah, he was just stuck with a lot of pictures at the end so I figured you know let's let him be and he had to go. They they always have to go. <laughs> so that that you know it doesn't matter. I've seen them right there so you know it's fine by me. I mean in the end when you've seen a couple superstars like that your allies they're they're no different. They're just people. They're people like you, like me, like anyone. It's just that we've seen their faces a lot. <laughs> 
and they they're millionaires <laughs> that's a big difference and they do something that millions of people like but in the end you know we're all the same so it's like oh it's that guy nice and that's it you know it's just talk to him and you know that guy sleeps he eats as well and he shits and he fucks and you know all the, all that stuff is uh, we're all uh, we're all the same in the end I was just gonna say, I wonder what I'm gonna play. It's like, is it really avoidable? You know, just, I think in the, in, in the last four years, there was only like three shows out of I don't know how many that I have not played it. What I want to do is compose, yeah. but I can't just do that. And I have to practice the same songs over and over and thousands of times because people, for some reason, want to see the person play it live. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, we can die. Thank you for coming. I'll do this stuff.